we're going to have a conversation uh, about women uh, and jobs and women and entrepreneurship and uh, talking about it through the lens of uh, conflict in uh, Africa and how that work is happening in that context and also in uh, Saudi Arabia as well. So if you wouldn't mind starting and just telling us a little bit about your work and background, that would be fantastic. Thank you for having this conversation. You know, in 1996, uh, I wake up and found that um, Africa was torn apart. I mean, everybody knew about it, but as an African, I was much more engaged in uh, supporting people in Latin America and many other places, and I said, no. Africa, we need we African to solve our own problem. And that's why I create Farm Africa Solidarity 1996. And what we do is we are in the field of supporting women in conflict zone. So first build a platform for women to express their, themselves and uh, come with their potential to change their destiny. Wonderful. Well, and Khalid, uh, tell us more about your work. Um, so I started up Glow Work, which is an organization that uh, creates jobs for women uh, through various avenues. So we work on career fairs, career counseling. Uh, we have a virtual office system. We have an online platform. Um, we work on uh, engaging uh, with the uh, public sector as well and government on public policies. Uh, and what we're looking forward to is, uh, is scaling up into the region and across the globe for and through a different model which uh, hopefully will be launched uh, very soon. I think you uh, both work in areas where for a number of reasons there's a whole host of obstacles in front of uh, women to um, get into the workplace and jobs that they like and jobs that are fulfilling uh, and to start businesses and so I think the important story for both of you is all the ways that you're helping women get around and through those obstacles. We have a lot of obstacles in the kingdom and we look at them as opportunities. Um, and, and one of the things uh, we found is that there was a huge demand to hire women in the private sector, but there was a gap in how to find the right talent. And so what we did is we started off with an online platform. The online platform just purely connected female job seekers and employers uh, together. Um, then we said we wanted to go out and advocate for job creation in sectors which women were not working in. And so uh, we went into uh, a number of sectors and industries. One of them was a large supermarket chain uh, in the kingdom. And it was the first time that women worked in a public space um, outside of hospitals. And so there was a huge public outcry that, you know, is this right, is this wrong? And those women had to let, be let go of um, because the public did not accept uh, to see women working in those positions. That um, changes our way of how we market, how we look at things. We started targeting men to try to change the mindset of the male population. Um, and so we, we started creating this virtual offices tool. We worked with a number of telecom operators where we hired their women to work from home as telesales or car center agents. They can monitor the number of inbound, outbound calls, they listen into the calls, they see how much time they're spending on Facebook and on Twitter. This concept, what it does is, it allows the uh, male individual in the household to understand the value of the income coming in, even if it's little. That's one. Number two, he sees that she's communicating with uh, other male colleagues by phone and by email. There is no issues there. Within a year, two years, he will push her out to the workplace and say, I want you to start working. Change of mindset. And this is what we've seen happen over the last uh, couple of years. So in, the, in, in, in four years, we had 50,000 women working in the private sector. Today, there's over 500,000 women working in the private sector in Saudi Arabia. We had this initiative, Women-Led Business Program, and uh, did, a, you know, did a, a survey on different countries, Liberia, et cetera. And uh, we, we look into businesses that have potential to grow. We say, really, if we need to have a critical mass of employees, but also of, of women that can you know, grow in their business, that they can have visibility and so on, we need to see what are those businesses that we need to support and, and, um, and maybe scale it up after in the second phase. So uh, um, in many places, so we choose some of the women that have that potential um, train them, give them the capacity to understand their businesses. But one of the things that we found out was also they need not just to build their capacity to understand their business, but also they need to be coaching, 
somebody to coach them. Mm -hmm. So we were um, uh, yeah. putting them in contact with you know other businesses, male businesses, um, those who have really make it happen. Uh, we did a mentor program with the, with them also. We did a study tour, um, uh, brought them abroad, and 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 really. They, they, they themselves created that network and be connected, but also it empowered them. Um, some of the obstacles, of course, are financing. Um, right. You know, I always say that in Africa, we, you know, the collaterals are one of the key issues. You go to the bank right. and, um, you know, women don't have a title. It's the men because this is, uh, you know, the customary law. Um, in many countries, there's the men who have the title. And you need the title to guarantee uh, whatever uh, loan you want to take to, from the bank. So we are also working on policy level to have land title for women. In addition to the policy levers that you're talking about, right, which would actually provide opportunity for women to have title, do you see creative financing options from banks? Well, there aren't as much as we'd like to see. Um, there is a number of semi-government organizations that have been set up um, that provide entrepreneurship funds uh, for startups and SMEs. Um, but also there, the process takes uh, a very long time, and by the time that it's done, you know you don't need the requirement for the for for, for the loan or the financing. There are a few uh, development that is happening. Of course, it's very slow. One of our advocacy with the African Union, with the chairperson of the African Union, Madame Zuma, who is very much concerned on this issue of women economic empowerment, uh, we we convene the, the the banks and we say, we need, you know, some kind of fund for women. We want you to put a big chunk of money from your fund for a special fund for women. So right now, I think we have been able to, it's a starting point to $200 million, it's, um, it's, it's starting. But we think that the bank itself can put a low rate in, in, in terms of the, uh, uh, the loan um, they will put for the women. So we are starting with that and also engaging with the, the, the National Bank as well in private uh, equity. Um, Tony Elomole, who is a Nigerian billionaire, have just uh, put an investment fund on entrepreneur. Now in Africa, we see the path of growth in terms of entrepreneur is women. Um, we see more women creating their businesses than even men. If we know from a talent perspective that women have just as much capacity to build these things, what, what else should we be doing? I mean, what, how, 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 much, how much further can we push this so that we get more women not just thinking about it, but truly enabled to build, to build real organizations? Um, yeah, sure. I, I, I've, I'll give you an example of what's happening in Saudi right now. So because we have a... It's the process of establishing a business and setting up your commercial registration and licenses and so on takes quite a bit of a time. Um, what, there's a lot of women going online on Instagram and opening their own businesses. And there are men that have opened up businesses as well on Instagram where uh, the, from the businesses that the women are selling, they would deliver those items. So they connect one another there. Um, those businesses, and there are thousands and thousands of them right now in Saudi Arabia, have a potential to scale up and create thousands of jobs uh, if they are given the right uh, amount of mentorship, the right amount of tools um, in order to uh, open up a, a shop uh, or an office based on the services and products that they sell. Uh, when it comes to uh, what kind of solutions that we are looking at right now, you know, we just adopted the SDG. What I like in the SDG is that we are more practical looking into solution. And other people have come into the discourse, which is private sector. So it's not just uh, uh, the government, but it, it's, we are more looking into solution, public, private. Um, and I think in the uh, entrepreneurship, we need to look at that as well. In the case of Africa, we are looking in terms of the land and agriculture. You know, 70% uh, of the, 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 the workers in the field of agriculture are women. 70%. They grow the food, but in a very small scale, you know, and um, we, we, we need to scale that. That's interesting. So what, what examples have you seen of, uh, you know, where, where people have started to recognize that maybe women actually have more talent 
than men do in certain roles and opportunities. Have, have there been examples? Recently, we worked with uh, Philips uh, in the kingdom on transferring their whole uh, uh, lighting factory uh, to Saudi women. And we hired, uh, we worked with them on hiring around 80 uh, women and packaging and assembling light bulbs. And the productivity uh, uh, level was over 300% from their male uh, counterparts. Um, and so that, that shows you that there is, uh, you know, there is willingness. There is, um, I, we see that the women want to prove themselves, wh where they don't need to prove themselves, but they are out there. They want to show that they are capable, they are talented, and, and they have a place uh, in the workplace as well as in, in decision-making throughout our lives. On that note, thank you for being a mentor and inspiring story in Saudi Arabia, and thank you for doing that in Africa as well. You're, you're amazing examples of what can be done and you know, enabling that for others, but uh, thanks for, for telling a part of your story today. It's been an honor.